Well, so you will wait two minutes for other participants to join. Uh, I think we can start now. We are almost uh, three, four minutes left. So, um, uh, first of all, welcome to GFT webinar about mobile trends. Okay, this webinar is part of the webinar series organized by GFT once a month. First of all, I uh, can I request you to enable your audio. For sure, we cannot hear, <laughs> but at least you can read on the presentation that remember to enable your audio. Session will be about 45 minutes of presentation about mobile trends and 15 minutes of question and answer at the end of the presentation. You can write your questions in the Q&I space during all the webinar and we'll answer at the end of the presentation. If you have other questions later on, please send us via email uh, to, the, to the speakers. We have the four speakers here on the screen, Ignacy, Catherine, Paco and Fabrice. You can send email to uh, all of us or just one of us. At the end of the session, you will be invited to fill out a quick survey about the session. I can ask you to take some seconds. You have just we're asking about just three, four questions. Just take some seconds to give us your feedback about the session. After the short introduction uh, about the dynamic of the webinar, let me introduce you the speakers for today. We have first of all the first speaker is Ignacy Barry, he is our global head of innovation at GFT. Second one will be Catherine Santiago, she is our main trend innovation consultant. The third and the fourth, well, the third will be Paco Amador, he's our global, uh, or head, sorry, of digital transformation, and myself, I'm Fabrice Abrigo, and head of digital unit. We'll start the webinar with a short, um, sorry, with a short overview uh, about uh, innovation at GFT with Ignacy. After, all, after that, uh, we'll go through mobile landscape, mobile trends, and the future of the mobile with Catherine. And we'll finish with the presentation with our GFT point of view about the trends with Paco Ignacy uh, and myself, and we'll review some, some examples in the real life we have uh, done, the realized, done at GFT. After that, before, we'll have a 15-minute session of question and answer at the end of the presentation. Please uh, remember that. So let's start, guys. I hand over the presentation to Ignacy to talk about uh, our innovation at GFT. Thanks, Fabrice, and uh, welcome to everybody. Uh, I know that you're interested on in the topic that we are going to uh, talk about today, which is uh, mobile trends, but let me share with you uh, before we jump into the topic uh, that this is not an isolated exercise. It is part of our innovation process. And sharing with you the idea that we have in regards to the chief key positioning uh, within the market when it comes to innovation, uh, on the right-hand side, we have the digital uh, players, the fintechs, the established big financial uh, uh, technical, technological uh, companies. On the left-hand side, we have the big established financial institutions, banks, uh, insurance companies around the world. And in the middle, we have GFT. And uh, the reason why GFT wants to play this man-in-the-middle role is because we want to learn from uh, new technologies, uh, new trends, new business models, new ways of approaching uh, IT projects and uh, leveraging on all this knowledge to afterwards help our customers in their digitalization journey. So this is the, let me say, the overall view uh, about the GFT positioning within the market. If we talk about the GFT view when it comes to innovation, our main statement, and something that we repeat over and over again, is that we want to make innovation tangible. We want to move far away from just PowerPoint presentations or Word documents, because we know that at the end of the day, all these assets compile, everything works on paper, and the key differentiator is to actually get your hands dirty and create using technology, using this or applying this trend, this new methodology, something out of it. And uh, out of that, learn, adapt. And at the end of the day, as I said uh, before, to have uh, first thing, GFP in their transformation journey and afterwards help our customers in their digital transformation journeys. So how, how we are doing that? 
So very briefly, uh, and at the bottom part of the presentation, you're seeing four different uh, uh, icons. So the first thing that we have to do is to understand what is happening in, in, in the market. We know that the market is changing very fast. Technology is uh, disrupting many industries. We are seeing how existing uh, industries are being disrupted by new players, like uh, fintechs in the case of financial services, but it's occurring the same in other markets and other segments. We also are seeing that uh, the way that we should serve the customer is changing because the customer has more information, uh, the customers want uh, a better quality, they want to be treated fairly in a transparent way. So all these changes that are uh, uh, quite difficult to keep pace if you're working on a big established company, it is something that uh, is outside and you should be aware of it. And the, the, the way of, that we understand all these new changes and we adopt all these changes is with our intelligence service. A concrete asset that we generate out of this service is, for instance, the webinar that you're about to, to uh, attend today. The second one is, even if you are very smart, even if you are able to identify all the trends that are going to disrupt or to change an industry, you still need an ecosystem because it is not feasible nowadays to innovate all alone. You need partners, uh, either if they are startups or established uh, IT or consultancy firms, to innovate. Innovation uh, uh, as, a, as a long wolf, it is not something that uh, nowadays uh, is going to help you to uh, or reach you to success. So, very important to follow an open innovation paradigm. The third point, and uh, I already presented that, is the fact that we apply all these learnings, uh, we collaborate with different stakeholders because our aim is to generate proof of concepts, accelerators, uh, prototypes, and so on, getting our hands dirty. If I have to say to you that machine learning can potentially improve your different processes, your different services, your different products, for sure, I can, I, can, I, can, I can say that by just reading what is on the internet. But one step forward is to show you how can you leverage some machine learning to improve your services, products, and so on. And we are only able to do that if we know how to do that. And that's the creation part. And this is actually leading me to the last part of, of this, uh, let me say, process, which is a transformation. Again, uh, digital transformation is a very hot topic. Uh, we say, because we do help our customer in their digital transformation processes, but not, not based on, on, a, on a theoretical experience, but because GFT is transforming, uh, we are transforming uh, GFT from the very beginning, applying ourselves all these steps that I'm, I'm sharing with you. So we are eating our own dog food. So this is how we make the innovation tangible. In the upper side of the slide, we have the different, let me say, ingredients that are helping us to accomplish these objectives. On the right upper side, we have the Coden, being the company within the GFT group that is helping us to get in touch with the digital entrepreneurs around the world. Then we have an international network of digital innovation labs, which is the place where all these new trends, technologies, stakeholders, and partners work together to create all these prototypes. So it's the place where we make all these uh, learnings tangible and the place where we show all these solutions to our customers in order to inspire them and to work from, from, from that point in uh, innovative or digital transformation related projects. On the left hand side, we uh, have the chief uh, core business, which is the, the channel throughout we uh, transfer all this knowledge, all this prototype, all these learnings towards our, our customers. Advancing, and this is the, my last slide before I hand over to Catherine, 
is the fact that GST is investing heavily in, in, in innovation. And we already have an international network of labs in, in uh, Sao Paulo, Brazil, in uh, Barcelona, in Spain, in London, UK, and uh, so far in Stuttgart, in Germany. This is a network that is going to be uh, a large and, uh, and increase it, and in many other countries where GFT has uh, a presence, and for sure, even if I cannot see or hear, you, or hear you right now, I encourage you to visit one of these labs because it is not the place, the physical place itself, which is, by the way, something um, cutting edge, let me say. It is the experience and uh, the, the knowledge that you will get uh, out of it. And talking about knowledge, uh, before we enter into a specific initiative, the first thing that we have to do is realize what is occurring in the market. And that's what uh, my colleague Catherine is going to present you in terms of uh, mobile trends. So Catherine, the floor is all yours. Hi, uh, my name is Catherine. I'm a trend innovation consultant at GFT. Thank you for joining us today. We are here today to talk about mobile trends. So, to begin with, the pace in which the mobile industry is going through is amazing. During the latest years, we have seen shifts in the mobile landscape. So, to understand this, we have developed a timeline that shows the evolution of mobile sector. As we can see, there have been three main events which explain the evolution of mobile sector. Since the age of industrialization, the offline world, through the age of digital transformation, where internet, information, and digital services are changing the way we live now. To the cognitive era, starting to impact on businesses and personal environment. With this in mind, we realize what are the motivations that are driving the change within the mobile ecosystem. The first one, geographic shift, searching the quality of life, the internet is mobile, becoming the most important tool of our time, the connected device explosion, Mobile changing how we socialize, and right now the concern about privacy issues. So, what is going on right now? The mobile landscape is facing with many challenges, but we would like to point out three of them. The first one, connectivity, boosting connected life. The second one, smart as the as the new green surrounding us in a smart environment and connective technologies disrupting businesses, human tax, behaviors, everything. These challenges are leading new business models, innovations, developments within the platform economy. So, understanding how mobile technologies are being adopted by industry, we spot several trends that are impacting different markets. So we organize these trends in three main groups. The first one, mobile global trends that are made up of four macro trends, 5G, Internet of Things, Artificial Intelligence, and Virtual Reality and Automated Reality. 5G. 5G is the fifth generation of wireless technology. It will increase the speeds at which we connect. It's not just your phone and your computer anymore. Home appliance, door locks, security cameras, cars, wearables, and so many other devices are beginning to connect to the web. As an example, we can see a Qualcomm making a partnership with LG to develop car connectivity solution to both car platform asking for a quick connection to manage and process data in real time. If you are more interested in each example, on the right side on the presentation, you have a QR code that link with the main source. The second one, Internet of Things, which includes several smart objects that will communicate through an app on a smartphone or table. 
These devices are going to add as a remote control, displaying and analyzing information. Here we have Peggy. Peggy is a smart clothes pet. It sends an alert to your phone with weather information to do your washing. The next trend is artificial intelligence. That is impacting all industries across and changing business models, how we interact with technology, providing advanced analytics, and setting up the conversational interface economy. But within the context of mobile sector, so far we have seen chatbots or virtual assistants. As an example, we have here ERA. ERA is a virtual assistant for B2B commerce that offers new automation capabilities to help users accelerate how they buy, pay, and collaborate. And the last one of this session is virtual reality and augmented reality. These trends are nothing new to us. They have been disruptive in gaming and entertainment industry. We all know some examples of games like Pokemon Go and Iron Road. But the main goal is to create immersive experiences and new business opportunities that bring value for both consumers and businesses. And here we have Buy Plus that allows customers to browse and buy items in a built-on mall as if they were walking through the physical structure. So I hope you all have been enjoying so far. Okay, let's continue with the next topic, mobile app trends. Uh, we have here uh, as the last group for trends related to wearable technology, app security, high personalization, and location-based services. Wearable technology. The smartphone will become the hub of personal network, consisting of several wearable gadgets. These gadgets will communicate with mobile applications to, del to deliver information in different ways. And here we have a smart bracelet to monitorize and analyze emotions throughout the day and give personalized recommendations to improve emotional well-being. The second one is app security with the aim of protecting devices, creating and managing services in secure environments, and finally by keeping data and I'm pass the third to my yeah. colleague to explain this. Uh, actually, uh, the example that uh, we want to share with you here is uh, Hemalto. I'm pretty sure that, uh, same as me, you have many uh, digital uh, services. I don't know, just to, to mention a few, you have Facebook or uh, Gmail or Skype and, and many other services, even your, your banking uh, account and so on. It is quite annoying every time that you are setting up a new account to remember the username and the password. And for those services that you enter eventually, you lock eventually, like once every quarter, or something like this, uh, it's quite likely that you can forget your username or even the password, so you have to uh, request for a new password. And so the whole process is quite annoying. So Hemalto, as uh, many other players, uh, what they are doing is moving from the digital security uh, company. Uh, I don't know if you're aware of, of, of Hemalto, but they are a producers of uh, plastic uh, security, so uh, credit cards or uh, SIM cards. Uh, Hemalto is the, is the main producer of, of it. So what they are doing is since we know that this is quite an annoying problem from the user experience, what we can do is to transform the smartphone into a second uh, uh, authentication uh, uh, element. So what you have to do is to enroll in their uh, mobile security service, uh, and uh, they will act as a one uh, time or as a single sign on uh, system. So it's going to be Hemalto, the one managing all your digital credentials within the, the internet. So to, pro, to, to, to provide you uh, an example for sure, you have to be, so Hemalto has to be trustworthy uh, because you are um, transferring to them the, the access to all your services 
in case you want to, in case you want to get rid of the many passwords and usernames that you have. So, Catherine. Uh, let's continue with the, with our third trend: high personalization. To build apps, focus on a specific customer name and deliver customized experiences. As an example, we have here the Volkswagen Smart Key Fob. It's a good example of this trend with beacon functionality. It provides personalized experiences, becoming a remote control to capture selfies. So, the last one of this uh, group is location-based services. It proposes enable users to find real-time information related to their current location and give proximity experience. And <laughs> Thanks, Catherine. So again, um, uh, I remember two years ago when uh, we discovered a, a YouTube video in which PayPal uh, presenting the, the new concept of purchasing experience. I'm going to summarize you a little bit the experience. Um, basically, is if you buy something on the internet and then you go to the physical store, uh, you grab the item, and uh, like the Amazon Go is proposing nowadays, you pay on the go uh, because you approach your smartphone into a small device called Beacon. Since two years ago, the Beacon technology has been uh, evolved for sure. And nowadays we have uh, up to three different beacons specifications. We have the Edstone, we have iBeacons, and we have the Alt Beacon, which is uh, emerging as the open, uh, let me say, specification or standard. We know based on our experience that managing from the technology perspective uh, this, all these beacons, it is, uh, it is not easy. And uh, as I said before, according to the specification, you have to uh, adapt the code that you are building. So in order to solve that and to make it easier to the developer community and at the end to the businesses, Google uh, created or launched a beacon platform that is uh, providing you a certain level of uh, abstraction. So you are dealing with beacons. That's it. So the specification is uh, not important anymore if you're using their platform. So here, what, you, what we are seeing is how the local-based local, local -based, uh, uh, services can be easily implemented using technologies such as the, the Google uh, Beacon platform. Thank you, Ignacio. And finally, uh, our last group, mobile app trends uh, in financial services. This group are made up by mobile only bank, payments, biometrics and signature and data management. The first one is mobile only banks. It's expected that in this year, half of the population are going to use their devices as a bank branches to access their financial services. A great example of a mobile bank is a Sterling Bank, offering different customer tailored solutions, such as the uses of infographic that enable customers to visualize their banking data in a different way, giving them more control over their money. The second one, uh, digital payments, facilitating purchases and payments using mobile phones, but in the future, it will expect that wearables are going to play a key role in the landscape. Venmo uh, is a mobile payment service that lets users transfer money to each other. It follows a similar business model to PayPal. The next one, biometrics. The new mobile application would allow integration of biometric and semantic-based software that can help read emotion and gesture detection. So, jumping again, Kathy, uh, here again and based, I'm going to share another experience. And I remember uh, uh, it, uh, it was two, two years ago in the Mobile World Congress. Uh, I was actually with Paco, which he is today uh, part of the, the the speakers of this webinar, uh, and we were discussing the technology of a very tiny startup 
called a verify and they were presenting us the ability that using technology uh, and actually using the vein patterns of the of, of your eyes the security threshold that they accomplish is quite high so even higher than the other biometric patterns that um, we, we are using nowadays and more convenient since uh, it is like taking a selfie the, the algorithm is uh, automatically able to capture these vein patterns uh, that they are that they are unique by the way uh, one year after that that meeting uh, and we 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 feel that they were quite promising. We saw that the Bank of America was the, the first bank in the world adopting such kind of technology. And by the way, they adopt the iPrint ID. So, the last one uh, is that uh, data driving money management. By merging money management capabilities into the experience, financial institutions should provide experiences that set their digital app apart using data to implement products and services. And here we have a money desktop. It's a tool that integrates into digital banking products and enables users to take control of their finance. So, finally, the future of mobile is based on experience and the way customers will interact with technology. So, as GFT, we forecast four trends that are going to shape the mobile landscape. These are the first one, flexible and wearable smartphones, breaking down physical barriers, electro vibration technology, being stimulated by touch and feelings, the brain-computer interface, when our thoughts become common, speech-to-speech -speech translation, communicating with the world through a fingertip. And as a sign of the future of mobile, we have an example here, the ice hand that turned our palm in a, into a touch screen a smartphone, projecting information onto the palm and fingers to easily access functionality. So that's all for now, and thank you so much for hearing. Thank you, Cathy. <clears throat> Would like now to to give you some some GFT point of view about these uh, these these trends, the global ones, but also the apps ones, and and uh, and particularly in the financial services, and give you some also some some example about what we did uh, in real world. I mean, in production and what also we are we are doing and we do in our innovation lab um, in terms of pilots, proof of concept, and uh, all stuff about about mobile. Okay, so we start again a little bit uh, with the mobile global global trends. We are talking or we are talking about 5G, this is a big big global trend about mobile. And what we can say is that banks. Are not waiting for 5G to, to operate, to be honest, and propose innovative services uh, with 3G and, and also 4G. They have no uh, network uh, to propose some kind of uh, innovative services. What you can say about 5G is that we'll be able to, to connect uh, quickly and to move a lot of data from server to the device. So, mm, this, this kind of, of, of things uh, will generate. Uh, new services, and this will impact positively the financial services sector. This is what we can say about about 5G. Okay, second one, what we are talking about, Internet of Things. Uh, you can see at the, the left side of the presentation some icons, logos. They are basically the startup fintechs or, or company who are working uh, working on with, with they are working with GFT. Uh, in uh, in in our innovation lab, mm -hmm. okay. So, about Internet of Things, what you can say is that the growth of Internet of Things allows banks to get more and more data and to know better the, the customer and enrich the bank processes. Okay. They allow also banks to open and manage new channels and devices, and therefore new opportunities of business. 
For example, Big Mac here in Spain has some prototype to insert a sort of money box in the uh, customer houses. Jeff Team present in all initiatives around identical things, mainly with the with the innovation lab here in, in, in Barcelona, but also in Sao Paulo. And we work with for sure beacons, Apple TV, vending machine, branches footprint, and maybe Ignacy can can give some more detail about Arduino and and all uh, yeah. estimates. Actually, Estimote is a company, it's a startup from, from Poland, and um, we work with them since the 2014. Uh, we are adopting their, their solution as a, as a standard for the, all the digital innovation labs. Uh, and the uses that we are delivering, or uh, that we are giving to the beacons, uh, they are quite um, a wide range of uses. So since using the beacon as a uh, gateway for payments uh, to use the, the the beacon to recognize whenever a customer is entering into a branch office, and uh, therefore we can improve the customer services services within the branches uh, and and many others. In the case of Arduino, what we did was to transform a vending machine into a smart vending machine. Uh, again. Uh, Easing the payment of certain goods that are inside the vending machine using your smartphone. As one of the things that we are seeing for the Internet of Things is the fact that uh, since we're going to have many devices uh, surrounding us, uh, the likelihood uh, to, 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 to increase the number of transactions for financial services definitely will increase, even if we uh, and, for, and the payment is, is one of the one of the uh, Example, for sure, as I said, uh, uh, Fabrice said before, uh, on the on the left hand side we have examples uh, of companies or technologies that we are using. These are not the only ones that uh, we have in our portfolio. These are just uh, some examples uh, to uh, give you a rough idea of uh, the topic that we want to present. Okay, last one. Um, um, next one, sorry, is about artificial intelligence, which is a big, big trend uh, right now in financial services, not only in financial services, but also in financial services. And because uh, artificial intelligence, we think that uh, will solve some challenges defined, defined, defined years ago by banks and still pending to be solved. Uh, at GFT, we define the strategy in four big areas. Uh, first of all, it's about customer experience with some virtual assistants with bots, talking basically chatbots that we have some 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 experience in GFT in production even. And second one is process automation um, with uh, basically RPA robot process automation uh, using products like Blueprint, Hero, data analytics and data management. This is the third one. Uh, email algorithms, some example about email algorithm transactions categorization mainly. And the last one is, is about advisory uh, with uh, robot advisory and smart transaction uh, advisory. Uh, I let Ignacy also um, yeah. telling some things about Amazon. Maybe. So, so actually here uh, you are seeing the IBM Watson, the Amazon Echo, and Google Home uh, icons. So we are merging a bit frameworks or technology versus devices. So we do find out that uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning is going to change everything with just financial services. And uh, with, within financial services, as uh, Fabrice was discussing, from the user experience to operational efficiency to advisory and many other, many other things. Even if we are in the early stages of, of uh, the applications of these technologies in, in, in the specific use cases, uh, and, and that's why we are testing many technologies. So we are been using Microsoft solution for machine learning and artificial intelligence from, from the Amazon solution that, by the way, is open source, uh, uh, the IBM Watson, and many of the libraries that uh, originally were created by startups and then afterwards had been acquired by big uh, IT companies like uh, Google. So uh, what we already have in, in our lab, and uh, we have started some project with uh, some clients, uh, it, is, it is around the chatbot scenario, it is about the robot advisory, and it, it is about 
answering questions like how much money do I will do I have to uh, buy a new television, which is uh, quite interesting and promising uh, question to answer, and uh, but a lot of work has to be put in that in that area in order to be able to to do that, and that's what we are doing since since many many months ago, researching researching. And delivering, by the way, some some real cutting edge pro projects. Uh, thanks to as well uh, our clients. Yeah. The large mobile global trends that we like to talk uh, about with GFT point of view is about virtual reality and augmented reality. <coughs> this is just coming in financial services. Uh, we see it into insurance, uh, for example. The point here is that customers are early adopters of that technology via very popular apps like uh, Pokemon Go. Okay, so, um, so customers are already trained, which is what I, I would like to say. So, so the bank just needs to find an attractive use cases uh, around virtual reality and augmented reality. For sure, I could just between quotation mark, okay, because the challenge is ob obviously not so easy. Okay, uh, we actually, for example, in virtual reality, augmented reality, we're actually working with five big European banks around this very interesting topic to find this killer functionality. Okay, maybe in a second, tell us uh, something about Microsoft. Uh, yeah, actually, uh, you know, the Microsoft released, uh, I don't know, I don't remember if one year ago, something like this, a product called uh, HoloLens. Uh, it, actually, the presentation wa was quite impressive and uh, we are using that technology uh, in many purposes. The first one, because we want to make our network of labs a purely digital, which means that you can interact with the lab, whatever you are. Not, not, it's not necessary to be uh, physically in our lab, and that's what we are doing, uh, what we are using, sorry, the virtual reality. And uh, the, the, the use cases that we are envisioning so far is uh, for real estate. Uh, so, for, if you want to buy a new house, and uh, we, we know for sure that many uh, banks have the real estate agencies, uh, a good way to engage with these customers is using the, this technology, the virtual reality. And uh, we are also forecasting that uh, how the branches are going to change, that we know that they will change a bit, or uh, quite a bit. Uh, the number of virtual reality use cases uh, will uh, arise uh, as, as well. Okay, we, we'll go to the second part of the, the GFT point of view about trends, but uh, I would like to re just remember you about questions. If uh, you'd like to, to ask something, just use the question and answer space into the, the webinar, please, or even the chat, because we are mapping the, both, of, both of them. Uh, so we'll be able to answer after the after the presentation. Okay, please uh, just don't forget to 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 ask some some questions. Okay, so uh, I would like to talk now about uh, mobile app trends. Basically, we're starting with wearable. That is also an <laughs> interesting topic. Um, about wearable, so see them as an extension of of your mobile. Don't look at your mobile. Don't look at your mobile phone only as a unique device, uh, but uh, extension of of that. I'm thinking about cars, I'm thinking about glasses for sure, watches, belts, dresses, and so on. We do a lot of apps and pilots for wearables, uh, apps for Google Auto, for example, uh, apps for watches, for Google Glass at the very beginning uh, before they disappear, microchips in dresses. <clears throat> Basically, what we'd like to say here is the banks need to be present in wearables. Uh, we think that more to position itself as innovative than making really money. Okay, I'm thinking, for example, about Google Glass. Um, first bank with an app in Google Glass, uh, Google Glass, uh, Google Glass, sorry, uh, before the Google Glass disappears. So it's an investment that, at the end of the day, uh, position itself like very, very innovative bank. But at the end of the day, the Google Glass disappeared and all the, uh, all the investment was uh, was done. And, and cancel at the end of the day without, without any return of invest. But, but uh, if you want to innovate, it is the kind of stuff that you have to do. Um, so sure. eventually, uh, part of your innovation or the, some of the assets that you're generating are not uh, good enough uh, because of the market, because of the, the, the 
lack of the maturity of the technology or whatever. So this is part of the innovation process. Just to mention or to share with you some of the examples that we have already implemented in, the, in, in GFT. So we do have certain uh, production projects with established financial institutions using wearables, for instance, using the Apple Watch. Uh, but what we see here, a good field in which the wearable technology can be merged with other, other disciplines to enrich the outcome, the, the ultimate outcome. And here, uh, the BioWatch logo is precisely uh, the example that I, will, I would like to share with you. The BioWatch uh, transform your smartwatch into a secure source of identification using the unique pattern of your veins. So this is something in the middle between the wearable and the security technology. And perhaps this is the way uh, that uh, the wearable will success or will transform or evolve into a something more, not just a second screen of your smartphone. Okay, so one point is about security. Um, what you can say is that customers are now more confident using using online banking. Uh, mobile still under reticence from security point of view. Okay, but we detect some some like a wind wind of change, wind of change, and, and mobile is every day more secure. For example, the last Samsung H8 uh, has now a new iris recognition, uh, which is announced much more secure than Touch ID. Um, we heard something about 80 times more secure than Touch ID. So mobile is uh, every day uh, more secure. We are working with them, with Samsung, to have the first mobile banking application in production using this Iris uh, recognition. It will be in production in, uh, in June. And we are collaborating with Samsung mobile innovation team in South Korea. Maybe in this we can tell you something about working. Uh, very uh, again is is how a specific uh, technology can be m migrated into another field. So using QR codes uh, to uh, secure certain transactions. So I imagine that you have a pending task in your mobile or, or online banking, like transfer twenty euros to uh, your friend, uh, your wife, whatever. So you can trigger this uh, this transfer operation by scanning a QR code directly from your mobile banking app. So this is the kind of example that uh, we are building with uh, Quark. Okay, talking about high personalization, um, uh, be not focused to develop an app for all channels. Uh, it is something that was done in the past, and and we think that we we have to to make we have to to specialize apps uh, for each of us channel to take advantage of specificity or to if of them uh, to offer basically a better customer experience. Okay. Uh, sometimes we see customers that try to mobilize their online banking or they, they web at the end of the day into mobile. Uh, we think it's, uh, it's, it's not wrong, but uh, in terms of functionality, it's, it's quite good because we can have a lot of functionality in your mobile in, in some uh, weeks or months. But, uh, um, from functional point of view, it's right, but totally wrong from from customer experience point of view, which is the the, the focus point on mobile uh, development. Uh, basically, what we say that we went from mobile first to mobile only, and from omni channel to opti channel. Okay, and what we can say we deliver app with different screens depending on the user connecting and the places is very very important to to do this high personalization of a mobile uh, application. And uh, to provide you two different examples uh, that uh, will give you a better understanding of, of this topic is uh, different companies want to know more about their customers, about their habits, about their, their spending habits, about where they are, uh, which uh, their friends and all this information uh, that they can merge or they can mix with, in the case of financial institutions, with financial uh, data. And out of it, they can improve the marketing campaigns, they can improve the look and feel of uh, uh, the user interfaces, they can uh, change a bit 
the processes that you have to follow according to uh, your uh, credit risk, for instance. So these are the things that we are doing. And uh, Friendly Score, for instance, is a startup that is helping us to generate a credit scoring uh, based on the social data uh, available of a certain customer. And uh, with Branchat, we are uh, also modeling uh, some uh, customer profiles uh, taking into consideration the financial data and also data that it is not purely financial. Okay, about uh, loc location-based services, which is the next point. Uh, contextualization of your device solves where you are, obviously. Um, we have not the same needs, um, same need uh, depending on uh, your location. Uh, this open books opportunity to offer functionalities depending on where you are, basically in the cars, in the branch, at home. Um, if you are, for example, in the branch, um, uh, we, are, we are maybe more worried about queue management to be attended than other functionality of uh, classic mobile banking. So you can personalize this, this application depending on where you are. I'm thinking about also a shopping center. Payments functionality maybe is more very, very important or more important in like that than other functionality like investment advisory and so on. Uh, so this is important to have a quick access to this functionality depending on where we are. As, as Fabrice, I, I suggest since we are running out of time to, yeah. to jump uh, to the other part of the presentation, in case you have questions, please uh, don't hesitate to, to ask. Okay, the last blog, the last part is about mobile app trends in financial services. Um, the first one is mobile banking, mobile bank only, uh, which is not dedicated uh, basically to only one purpose. Um, we think that we'll move um, in the next year from application or mobile only bank uh, to plugins to insert the bank into the digital life of the customer. Functionality will be available from your favorite messaging app like uh, WhatsApp or Telegram, Messenger, and so on and so on. And this is perfect for the second, the, 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 the following point, which is about, um, about payments. Sorry. Uh, one concrete use case of the, of the plugin I just talked before is about payments. P2P will be available from messaging app. Uh, in fact, just last week, preparing this webinar, BBVA, the first bank here in Spain uh, launched a keyboard in Android uh, to do a P2P uh, from WhatsApp application. Well, not today for WhatsApp, uh, but basically from, from, from the keyboard. Pay standard? Yeah, so the uh, other uh, just to time. give you a, a taste of uh, the innovation that we are doing here. So we know that the near field communication sensor that uh, the smartphones uh, have like iPhones and Androids. In the case of Android, only the latest devices uh, have these uh, sensors, so you can use it for sure, because uh, Android is more a, a, a more open uh, mobile operating system, but it is not the case of the Apple-based um, devices. The, the near-field communication is a protocol that is just uh, Apple reserving the use of uh, to use it. And that's why uh, Paytander created a new technology based in ultrasounds that require just speakers and uh, a microphone to uh, ease payments. So whenever you want to pay something in a store that uh, uh, has adopted this technology, the point of sale is uh, uh, ready to receive a, si a signal that is uh, uh, generated by the, the smartphone of the customer using the uh, speaker of the smartphone, which is accessing to all the devices around the world. Okay, about biometric, biometric is reality for sure, and obviously the, the future, authentication, authorization, contract signature, digital signature, all these kind of stuff are used uh, in, for example, digital onboarding. A lot of use cases are to the end of development around all that, uh, that topic. And to go to the next and last. Yeah, uh, before jumping into the data management in case of biometrics, uh, yeah, so your voice, your eyes, uh, even your heart rate, uh, according to the last uh, news that we have seen uh, while preparing this uh, webinar, so you name it. So uh, even the way that you are using your smartphone, so using the accelerometers and so on, are being used as part of uh, your security uh, profile. And yeah, data management.
Yeah, that's a management banks give give tool now or now in the last year, let me say, uh, to the customer to manage their data via personal finance management, for example, or more recently via smart transaction management. This is just starting in terms of using, for example, artificial intelligence, which opens really uh, new opportunities around all this uh, topic of data management. So, uh, last two startups to share with you. The first one is Figo. We know that uh, at least in, in uh, Europe, the bank will have to open their uh, systems to third party providers for payments and to uh, grant access to data information of customers to the payment service directory to and access to account, which is from the regulatory and compliance uh, spectrum. So Figo is, is, is making this happen quite easy, uh, following a bank as a platform approach, either to uh, existing and established financial institutions or even facilitating this access to uh, fintech that want to access the, the, to this information yeah. of, uh, of their clients uh, in the, the bank's account and so on. And QBank is uh, many other examples regarding how can we ca automatically categorize your statements and uh, uh, think regarding how do we manage uh, financial data of our customers. Great. So. Basically, that's us for the webinar. We can go to uh, to the question and answer. We have two questions. First question is from Sarah. Uh, but if, if this uh, webinar will be published, this we, yes, this webinar will be published in our YouTube channel, and we'll receive the the link uh, via email. Okay. Second question is from Edouard. Edouard is asking about um, which one of these trends do you believe is going to change the most the banking industry, the most of the banking industry in the near future, or maybe a combination of Gary Teote. Uh, if I have to highlight one of the trends that we have disclosed today, I would say that artificial intelligence is going to change. because Not because it's going to change mobile, because it's going to change everything. And since it's going to change everything, the impact that it will have on the mobile channel will be, will be higher. So it's going to change how we are going to be served, it's going to change how we are going to be recommended, uh, it's going to change how we are going to interact even with, uh, with uh, the branch teller, uh, it's going to change how do we invest, and for sure the mobile will still be one of the channels and the, the channel that we are going to use to uh, uh, interact with financial institutions. So since artificial intelligence is going to change the whole concept of uh, finance, I would say that this one is the topic that will change the most the mobile uh, spectrum. Yeah, we all agree with that. Is there any <coughs> questions? We know that we have shared with you a lot of topics, but we wanted to provide you a landscape. And uh, just in case there is any specific interest, we still offer you the chance to contact or to reach out uh, to, uh, directly to us uh, using our emails. Okay, we have another question. Let me check. Okay, from Jose Raimundo Peña. What would you say about the critical success factors for deploying mobile transactions in the insurance company that are not experiences with this technology? With technology? So I'm going I'm to assume that you are asking us uh, whether some of these the topics that we have shared with you are going to change somehow the insurance spectrum. Is is my interpretation right, uh, Raimundo? Yes, great. So uh, we know that the insurance industry is uh, following the banking uh, industry steps. So in, in, in that regard, then, uh, we know that for sure uh, some of these topics perhaps not all of them, will also uh, impact directly in the insurance industry. Just, just to provide you uh, one example, that something that is already happening. Whenever we have an accident uh, using our car, our motorbike, or even when we are traveling abroad, there's something that we always bring with us, which is the smartphone. So if uh, in our case, the fatality is, uh, is a car accident, we use uh, that uh, device 
to first thing contact our insurance company to say, hey, I have an accident. The second thing is automatically the insurance company, what they can do is sending directly a uh, assistance. And uh, what we can do with the smartphone is to follow the track of our incidents, which is when we uh, raise our hand saying, hey, I have an accident, uh, when my company has answered to me, when the 24-hour uh, assistance is going to come, where is base, and finally, even we can take photos or pictures of, uh, of the car to afterwards um, conduct the, let me say, the, the insurance process in which we are going to evaluate the, the damages of the car and we are going to calculate uh, the, the, how much money the insurance companies will provide me to even fix the car or pay for my insurance bills or uh, sorry my, my health uh, bills that I will in case I have to go to the hospital and so on. Uh, things that are impacting as well or potentially the insurance uh, spectrum when it comes to uh, mobile, it is uh, the shared economy. So we know the Airbnb, uh, we know uh, even Uber, we know uh, Lyft, uh, many other companies that are basing their businesses based on the shared economy. So even Tesla, so the autonomous car. So what is going to occur? when the car will reduce the number of accidents because of the technology. As the passenger of the car, it is going to be the insurance company, the one that will issue a contract directly to me, or is it going to be the insurance company uh, will deal directly with Tesla, with uh, Volkswagen, with Mercedes, an insurance contract to cover the passengers that are going to be inside the vehicle. So sooner or later, we know for sure that the insurance uh, industry will be impacted as well by all these uh, topics. Okay, <clears throat> thank you, Ignacio. Um, I think we have not any other questions. We have two minutes left before closing this webinar. Maybe we can wait for some other question. Just one minute, if not, uh, we close. What I propose for Chris is, is, is uh, coming back to the slide in which we have our uh, mail contacts. Uh, please do not spam us, but uh, you can use it for sure to reach out and uh, to ask anything, to propose anything you want uh, in case there's something missing uh, or you miss something, please don't hesitate to, to contact us. Uh, since we are running out of time, uh, on behalf of the whole team, I would like to uh, appreciate your time to join this, this webinar. It uh, has been a pleasure to, to, to share all these, uh, let's say, insights. Okay, we have another question. Wow! We have, we have a million dollar question, which is, is there any influence of bitcoins in the mobile devices, yes, there is an influence. So uh, for those that we that for those that they don't know, Bitcoin is an implementation of the blockchain protocol. Of the blockchain protocol is a cryptocurrency, and uh, yes, uh, there are many many wallets uh, that are being proposed or built originally for uh, cryptocurrencies. Uh, so we are transforming the smartphone, the mobile phone, into a digital wallet. So this is one of the use cases that uh, we already have seen, like Coinbase is, for instance, a platform or a mobile app that is letting you uh, enroll into, into the, the Bitcoin uh, uh, network and to buy directly Bitcoins. Or, so yes, uh, the fact that potentially Bitcoins will be uh, a cryptocurrency that is going to be used in a uh, daily basis. This is something that in some cases we already have seen it. And uh, yeah, so, so part of the landscape of, uh, of the, the near future is how the cryptocurrencies will influence many businesses. And for sure, if you want real-time payments, 
it is going to be either your smartphone or either a, a direct uh, plastic card. So this is it. The presentation will be available for us. Yes, definitely will be available in uh, the GFT um, channels. You're welcome. Okay, thank you, thank you all. I think we can close this webinar. And thank you very much for attending. Bye, thank you. Thank you, bye. Have a nice day. Bye.